Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Skyrim Special Edition, my name's Camel, and in this video today we are going to be acquiring and talking about the unique necklace, the Locket of Saint Jib, an item that must be collected by any who wish to show their praise for Morrowind, as Jib became a saint by eradicating the cliff races. Oh yes, remember the cliff races? <laughs> Enemy. So to get the locket of Saint Jib, we'll need to come to the Soul Can. And now at this point, I'll assume everyone knows how to get here, and if not, refer to either my guides for the Arvac spell or the Bone Men Conjuration spells. The links to those can be found in the description, and at the beginning of both of them, there is a guide of how to get into the Soul Can. In short, just do the Dawn Guard main quests, and you'll end up here in about an hour or two. Also, if you're following this guide on the standard Skyrim edition, you will need the Dawn Guard DLC in installed, and if you wish to skip to any specific page or to the overview of the locket itself, timestamps can be found in the description. As well as being a guide for the locket, this video is also a guide for the quest The Impatience of a Saint, in which we'll have to pick up the 10 pages of Jib's opus. Now you can pick up the pages in any order, but for this video I've chosen what I feel is the most time and distant efficient method for collecting the pages of Jib's opus. And as the Sulcan doesn't have a map of its own, I'll refer to this map, which as you can see I've clearly highlighted all of the Opus Pages locations with pink circles. We also don't need to get the quest from Jib to be able to pick up the pages, and getting the quest doesn't add map markers for the pages either, so we'll actually be getting the quest after collecting all the pages, at least in this guide. So firstly, as we enter the Soul Can, we'll want to follow the path northeast and visit the building right here as soon as we enter. Notice the two glowing lights in the stone pillars? We'll need to hit those with projectiles, arrows or spells will do. If you brought neither, fear not, a bow and arrows can be found right on the stairs next to you. Shoot each of the lights and they will fade. As they do, the bars on the door will also recede, allowing us to enter the building. Right on the floor next to the chest is the first page we'll be picking up. Page 8. Now, we'll want to exit the building and make our way northeast once more and head straight to the neighboring building. As soon as we enter the building, there will be a chest on the floor and next to this chest is the second page we'll be picking up, page six. From here, we'll need to head northeast once again, all the way up against the wall. I think Trump's been here. As we approach, look for a set of stairs, atop them is a ghost, and next to him on a brick is the third page we'll be picking up, page number one. After getting that, we'll need to head all the way northwest while remaining on this side of the wall. We'll need to head through a doorway and enter this walled off area. Once in here, head up the stairs to the top. There will be a chest and next to it on the floor will be the fourth page we'll be picking up page 3. After this, we'll need to head southeast and through the gateway in the wall. As soon as we do, we'll want to stop at this building on our left. Here, atop the barrel next to the broken carriage is the fifth page we'll need to pick up, page 10. After we pick that up, we need to head northwest, a far ways northwest. Right up against the northern barrier of the Soul Can, we'll find this roofed labyrinth type building. Head on inside, we'll be looking for a purple portal circle on the ground. You can follow the path my character is taking to get there, or if that's too hard, just walk around for a minute or two and you'll find it no problems. Just for a bit of extra help on the local map, we enter the building here, and the portal is here where I'm standing. Once you find it, walk into it. This will teleport us onto the roof. Once up here, simply head to the center of the roof, and on the western side of the chest, we'll find the sixth page we'll need to pick up, page 9. Now we'll need to head east, to a small building on the western side of the boneyard. It's easily distinguished as it contains a dead word wall. In front of the wall is a chest, and next to the chest is the next page. It's very hard to see, as it is hidden under fog and scrub. Nonetheless, this is the seventh page we'll need to pick up, page 2. Now we'll want to head east again, to the eastern side of the boneyard. Here there is a building standing all alone, so it's easy to spot. Heading up the stairs, and at the top at the end of this short hallway is a chest, at the base of which is the eighth page we'll be picking up, page four. After grabbing page four, we want to head east once more, 
all the way to the most eastern edge of the Soul Cairn. Here, on this raised platform, along with the Conjure Mist Man spell tome, we'll find the ninth page we'll be needing to pick up, page 7. From here, head a fair ways southwest until we reach this noticeable open paved well. On the ground next to the other treasures, we will find the final page we'll be picking up, page 7. Five. Now that we have all 10 pages, all we need to do is simply turn around and walk north for about 5 seconds. Here we will find Saint Jib. We need to talk to him and ask him about his opus pages. After a very interesting and lengthy conversation, we will be given the quest The Impatience of a Saint. Now because we've already collected all of the pages, all we need to do is talk to him again and tell him we've collected all 10 of his pages. He will then reward us with the first volume of his opus, but more importantly, the Locket of Saint Jib. So now we have the damned thing, was it worth it? Well, let's find out. The Locket of Saint Jib. It is actually a light armor necklace. Its slot is of course the neck. It has a base armor rating of 5. Its weight is 0.5. It has a value of 2422. It can actually be upgraded with a gold ingot. This feature is specific to the Skyrim Special Edition. In Skyrim Standard Edition, this feature is lacking. The necklace cannot be upgraded. But luckily, we're on Skyrim Special Edition here, so it can be upgraded again with a gold ingot. And its enchantment, fortify stamina by 50 points, and fortify carry weight by 50 points. Yes, you heard it right people, the Locket of Saint Jib is actually a light armor piece. It provides an armor rating to the wearer, instantly pushing it above most other necklaces. In fact, it is one of only two necklaces in the game that provide an armor rating to the player. When the Locket of Jib is worn, it does also increase your light armor skill, as with any other normal piece of light armor. Along with this almost unique attribute of providing armor, the Locket of Saint Jib has a very powerful enchantment, which actually fits with most character types. Most characters need some stamina regardless of their playstyle, along with the stamina, all characters need some carry weight capacity, and a boost of 50 is a most welcome one. These boosts from the enchantment are more background support stats, so you won't notice some crazy difference in your playstyle when it is equipped. But 50 extra stamina will make a difference, especially for a melee or ranged based combat players. And the 50 point boost to carry capacity is a massive difference, which will allow you to stay out exploring and collecting for longer. And again, the light armor rating is awesome too, even for characters that wear heavy armor, some armor from your necklace is better than no armor from your necklace. There you were, walking around unprotected, then ironically, neck minute, you've got the Locket of Saint Jib on. An awesome choice for just about any playstyle and an artifact for the ages. Blessed and given by none other than the saint himself, Jib the Eradicator. There we have it ladies and gentlemen, a little throwback to the classic character from Morrowind, Jib. I do hope this video helped you out in at least one way. Please consider liking, sharing and commenting. Individual Skyrim guide links can be found in the description along with the link to my Twitter. Be sure to follow me to guarantee you are notified when I upload a new video. Check out the playlist on screen and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel and I'll see you shortly in the neck video.